call the meeting to order at 603. 703. Yep, sorry. <laughs> different time zone. It's different time zone. I'm, I'm always in a different time zone. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, well, there's Ken, just in time. We'll start with the treasurer's report. Hang on a second. Um, you know okay. what, John? You have to take roll call again. Um, oh, okay. Everything's got to be. And we get to the whole speech because there's not a quorum in the room. There's a quorum. Oh, in the no. room? In the room. In the room. Oh, the he's got I thought we can bypass that. Yeah. You know what? I didn't even think about that. Do you have the, the remote meeting guidelines to read since we don't have a quorum in the room? I thought I, they bypassed yeah, the, that. No. The, the only thing you have to do is name who's in the room and who's online. Yeah, but who? What was the bypass? Because there was a change to it. They, there was a change to it, but it still has to be. The right. There's Sandy. Fully remote. The change that I saw was, you have to name who's in the room, no. and who's online. That way, you have your. No, there was there members. was a there was a change that that uh, removed some of the requirements that were being done before uh, beforehand. I unfortunately don't have those guidelines anymore because I can't access the server that has them. No, I got them uh, on, at home on my computer. Uh. Can you ad lib them, John? Oh, wait, they're on the town website. Huh? They are? Yeah. Do we have, uh, do we, uh, Joanne, do we have anyone on that's not on the committee? Colleen. Colleen? Maybe she would know. No, I've got them. They're here on the website. Hang on. Okay. I'm sure we don't have to do this anymore. I'll bring that for the next meeting. Of course, there'll be 17 people here then. I thought it was that because the emergency orders were over, but it could be that didn't change everything. There was something in there to the effect that uh, to the uh, it was up to the the like the mood of the uh, the presentation or something like that. I forget the phrase they used. All right, John. I'm going to screen share them. I'm not convinced. Oh, Paul. I got to get Paul stuck. Hang on one second. All right. I just promoted him to. You guys are like so needy. All right, can you see these, John? Yes. All right. These are the so guidelines. So I still need to. So um, I can't. I uh, never got a link at six o'clock or whatever, and the link that was in the um, the agenda wasn't actually a link. I had to cut and paste it in. And then I know. it brought me in as a, not right. as a presenter. Right. So That's I, I don't it, know. So Paul, uh, check your spam because I sent it to you twice today. I would check your spam. Yeah. Folder. I was never having any problems and in the last two months. It's been happening every time. So I don't know why. But I, I will do that. It's not just this meeting either. It can happen in other meetings. <clears throat> This doesn't have anything about what has to be said, but this also doesn't say that the, they has to read them. It just basically saying we need to have roll call. Um, people need to be muted. Um, if they're visitors, they need to put their give their name and address. Um, oh, the chair or president support staff should adhere to the script provided as an attachment to this document. It's not attached though. Well, I move that since it's it's been provided on the air, and the only one beaming in is uh, Jen, who knows this anyway. Like, can we just proceed? Yeah, I say we just do the roll call and move on. Yeah, 
I think that sounds like a good okay. idea. So, John, do roll call, okay? Okay. Um, I'll call the meeting to order at 7.08, or do we go with the 7.03? <laughs> What's this? I make a motion. That... Oh, my God. We'll go with 7.03, 7 we'll... John. What? 7.03? Mm -hmm. Okay, so 7.03. Um, I'm do a roll call. Rich. Yes. We're going to be very informal. Justin. Here. Jim. Gallagher here. Paul. Carlet here. Brooke. Here. Sandy. Here. Ken. Here. John present. And Kristen is absent. Okay. Um, we are uh, going to start with the treasurer's report. Ken. Okay. Uh, can I share? Yes. You're all Certainly. set. Okay, uh, I sent this out uh, in a PDF to everybody earlier today. Uh, I'd first like to call attention to uh, fiscal 2021, which ended uh, on Ju June 30th of this year. The difference is that um, the when uh, I took a look at the state match, I, real, I, I noticed that the um, um, the, the CPA revenue, that the two and a half percent revenue, was uh, fifty nine thousand dollars higher than we had estimated uh, at the beginning of the year. So it added fifty nine thousand dollars to uh, the amount of money that we have, and it, uh, that's reflected in the bottom line right here. And so this is uh, fifty nine thousand dollars bigger than it was when we looked at it last. That's good news. Now, so moving, and that of course rolled forward to fiscal 22 in the undesignated fund. So going to fiscal, going to 2022, uh, we also have an upside uh, good news. The state match came in, and it was higher than uh, the estimation guidelines were for us by uh, forty-seven thousand dollars. So that adds. Uh, uh, more than a hundred grand to the amount of money that we uh, were working with. The, That's awesome. uh, the articles that we proposed in October were all passed. There was uh, $47,000 for North Street, and there was uh, uh, town record preservations. And so that was about it. So that leaves us uh, uh, with a seven hundred and ninety-two thousand dollars, which is a little over a hundred grand more than we uh, realized last time we met. So uh, the 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 Grafton CPA uh, is in good shape. That's I, great. Any questions? No. Make a motion to accept the uh, the treasurer's report. Second. Second. I have a motion by Jim, and I see Paul. So I think Paul maybe said second. Uh, so a motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I will do a roll call. Rich? Yes. Justin? Yes. Jim? Gallagher, I. Paul? Scarlet, I. Brooke? Yes. Sandy? Yes. Ken? Aye. John, I motion carried unanimously. Thank you. And if you make a motion, I think like say Gallagher, make a mo you know, how identify yourself. So that way I'm not missing you if I can't pull it out. Um, See, I got to do it quick because Justin jumps in. Okay. <laughs> well, we don't, we need a buzzer. What's we need. Well, that's it. We should get those little buzzes. <laughs> Gallagher graphed it. <laughs> we use Here's those on the geezers. Buzz is in first. Hey, Ken, can you okay, stop thanks. sharing your screen? Okay. Oh. I'm, I'm done. Okay. okay. Um, moving on to the clerk's report. Uh, Gallagher makes a, a motion to accept the uh, meeting minutes of uh, November 4th, 2021. Charlotte seconds. I have a motion and a second. Um, do we have any discussion? Yes. All those in. Whoop. I, I, think I heard a yes. Yes. On in the minutes between lines 100 and 102, I just wanted to call out that the where did I hit, to discuss an email to discuss the email John discussed at the beginning of the meeting so that it's 
identified which email I'm talking about. Justin, okay. Let's discuss an email. Say that again, please. I'm sorry. To discuss the email John sent and mentioned at the beginning of the meeting. And I also wanted to add that. Wait, 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 wait. You know what I'm going to do? Hang on one second. I'm sure. Sorry. I'm going to screen share this so that you can see me typing this in, okay? All right. Justin asked to discuss an email. John sent out to the committee and discussed at the beginning of the meeting? Yes. Okay, and what's the next one? The next part is John Stevens stated a vote was not needed because he would add it to the next agenda. Or because he said he would add it to the next agenda. Now that's I've I've made these changes. These are obviously the committee's minutes, so you have to. Vote I, on I have changes. another correction while yep. we're at it. Yeah. On line one hundred. Yes. Uh, that John Stevens sent out to the committee. It was not sent out just to the committee. It was sent out to friends of mine that included members of the committee. We can we can change that to John sent out. Strike the to the committee and just put and discussed. And I think that's suitable to me. And to follow up on line 102, the reason we're not discussing it is that the select board met recently and said it it's over and there is no need to discuss it any further. So that's why we're not discussing it. It's done. Any other corrections? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, starting Aye. with Rich. Justin. Aye. Jim. Gallagher, aye. Paul. Scarlett, aye. Brooke. Aye. Sandy. Yes. Ken. Aye. John, aye. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, since the last meeting, if I'm correct, Joanne, that, um, there was, uh, determined that there's a need for you to have a laptop and uh, mm -hmm. you discussed it with Evan, Evan made whatever purchase and that will be charged to our, uh, admin account. Is that pretty much the long and the short of it? Yeah, I think it would make sense for the committee to vote and say that they're willing to use the CPA um, administrative fund to pay for the laptop. Because right now I'm using the laptop that is for the really the role of the assistant to the select board. Okay. Um, so this really needs to go back to them because I have the power of okay. the clickers on this. Okay, so just so you guys understand because Joanne's no longer in that office, she no longer has the access to the laptop. We did not have a laptop, so this provides her with a laptop to support uh, our committee. And whether I'm in this role or, or it's someone else, it, it's kind of like finance. I, yeah. Fine, Paget moves to, to do it. Gallagher second. So I have a motion yeah, and yeah, a second yeah. to approve uh, the purchase of this uh, a laptop. Not this one, but a laptop. Um, any further discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, Rich. Aye. Justin. Aye. Jim. Gallagher. Aye. Paul. Scarlett. Aye. Brooke. Aye. Sandy. Yes. Ken. Yes. John. Aye. Motion carried unanimously. Um, Next item is the Robinson property. And I believe, um, Justin, you wanted to bring that up? Yes. You want to discuss that? Okay. Yep. Well, let, I, I had one you thing to, to say on it that I don't know if the committee wanted to discuss further, so I felt it better just have it as a agenda item. It was brought to my attention through the select board that 
there may be a special town meeting coming up for a TIF pro for the GSX project on Lipton Street. And where it was previously mentioned here that we may need a special town meeting for the Robinson property. It was worth bringing up that the town may be holding a special town meeting mm -hmm. anyway. So that would, would alleviate a need to ask for one and it would we could bundle that into a a likely upcoming special town meeting do you know when that might take place um i i got it as a down? hey this might be happening might kind of thing happen. You're giving a tip to the developer it, this this isn't the 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 upton street property that's coming out of 61a is it no, this no. Is, the Robinson is property that across um, the street. Yeah, it's it. Well, Ken, you can speak to where the property is better than anyone, but I don't believe that um, an offer. I don't believe that the Robinsons have an offer yet, and until they have, you know, full blown purchase and sale. Yeah, we like, can't act. It's yeah, it's well, not not a to act on today. It was more just the heads up that it's there's there's likely to be a special town meeting coming for. That GSX property is what I was told about. What's GSX property? The the highway barn. The, the, yeah, the highway barn property. Is going to be a tiff on the highway barn? Potentially. That's literally all I know is what I what I said about it. John, okay. my suggestion it sounds ridiculous. My answer right. is well, here. <laughs> what, may I, may right. I speak, Mr. Chairman? Ken also um, has his hand raised. Just oh, Ken, okay. John. I'll let Ken go first. Ken and then Rich. Ken. Okay. Uh, that's uh, that's you know that would be very convenient if the timing worked out. Uh, so one question that I heard raised but not answered because you said you didn't know the answer was when do you think that town meeting town meeting might be? Uh, it would certainly be convenient if they could be both handled at the same time. Uh, as far as I know, the status of the Robinson properties, which are adjacent to well, almost adjacent to the properties that the CPA purchased recently. They are on the shores, uh, literally on the on the shore of Lake, of Silver Lake, and between Silver Lake and the, and Route 140. And so they're they're prime properties, and it's really um, it's really a must have. I think everybody in town agrees with that. Uh, the there are three lots. There are, I think, two more lots that uh, could 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 come in the future. But in any case, I think there are, no, excuse me, there are two lots, there are two. And uh, so in any case, they are posted for sale. They're being marketed now. And, and, and so when uh, a satisfactory offer is made to the Robinson family, they'll be, that will be passed on to the town. And we can't know for sure when that's going to be, and but. Colleen so, has added in the chat that um, it, January or February is when they're looking at the potential for the town meeting. So, okay. Well, the later the better, given that we don't know when the uh, when an offer might be tendered. But uh, one point is that there are two lots, and it's it's hard to conceive that the lots would go for much more than about you know on a high with a high estimate. Three hundred thousand dollars. It would seem, certainly, most certainly, be lower than that. And Fine. the CPA, right? This, excuse me. Is that uh, anyway, I was going to say the CPA has enough money to buy, just buy that one. So it's one hundred fifty each, not three hundred each. It's excuse me, one hundred and fifty per lot. You're that would be high, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, right. that's that's a that's you know my that's idea standard, of what a yeah. high a high estimate would be. Yeah. It would probably be lower than that. But even if it were that high, the CPA funds right now, with the especially with the infusion of the additional hundred and ten thousand dollars, could just could just take care of that as is without doing could a you, bond. Could you restate that? Because I couldn't understand. Is it three hundred per lot or three hundred for both? Oh, I would guess three hundred both. Three hundred per lot would be, uh, uh, you know, it's se seemingly unimaginably high. Okay, I would so say three hundred. Total for both of them on the high side. Okay, and even I, even that, can, you know, can, that's a buildable lot now. Anywhere, I mean, two of them are lots one hundred and forty to one hundred and fifty, and that's on the water. Yeah, There's yeah, two buildable lots there. Yeah, so, so I mean, that's just so a you regular... think Brooke, it might be higher. I I don't. I mean, everything seems to be higher. 
You know, so I'm just saying a, a regular lot in town for a while has been over 125. So yeah. I, I, listen, I hope it goes for 150 because it's better for us. But I would. Well, I thought there were four lots. I thought. No, there's only two lots being offered right at this moment. Oh, okay. Oh, and then those are the other two. I'm sorry. And the other two are coming up okay. later on. I thought all four. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. But so anyway, uh, not knowing how much they will, the offer will be made for, uh, I'm still pretty confident that the CPA funds are sufficient. Okay, so we'll hope that if that's the case, that that happens quickly and the town meeting happens slowly so that they can converge and we have one special town meeting for all of it. Well, I, I, I want to speak up here. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, I'm so sorry. You're, you're, um, can you um, hear me now? No, yeah, I can hear you. Yes. It's like, it's me. I'm sorry. Again, I'm like, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm com kind of dumbfounded to be honest with you guys is that we talked a few months ago about the Noel property in the center of town that Ken and I agreed it was a no brainer for the, for us. We had the money for 500,000. Um, to buy the property and then just sell the house and the other part to get our money back. But now we, I, I read this morning in the, in the um, Grafton News that Evan and the select board have made an agreement with the contractor that's buying the property. Why do we, no, no offense to anybody here, is why are we talking about like the Robinson property, the Noel property, um, to put our money there, okay, wasting our time if the select board and the town administrator don't take our advice that saying, you know, we have the money, why don't we use it to buy this property? It was stated that we don't have, the town doesn't have the money for the 500000 so we made the deal. Well, Ken and I and you people here, we all voted on it saying it was a no-brainer, if you remember right to buy the property and the, we had the money in the account. Now, what are, what are we doing by talking about this if we're gonna have another, you know, the select board and the administrator making deals and not taking our suggestions? Why do we talk about them? That's my- Which is, that, the, that's my which is the Noel property, um, Rich? I'm not sure. 117, I can 117 that. Upton Street. I can address that. You know, uh, I mean, I thought we had something going there to do, you know. Yeah. What do you yeah. got, Ken? Let, Go ahead, let Ken. Ken address that. Okay, so uh, I, I, I understand what your question is, and the answer is that what worked out it turns out to be a, a better deal for, you know, all parties. The... Uh, uh, as it turns out, a little bit of background. There was a, a 61A prop, or 61, Chapter 61 property on Pleasant Street that was adjacent to some town conservation property, some uh, you know fish and wildlife conservation property, and it, it was up. You know, and the question was, did somebody want to uh, exercise the Chapter 61 right to purchase and buy the whole thing and then try to do something with it? But uh, somebody and. And I, I think it was Rob Aberg, who is a current president of the Land Trust, had a brilliant idea. And he said, "Well, why don't uh, we make a, a, a? Why don't we come to an agreement with the developer who's making the purchase offer ahead of time, and the in in the such that the developer uh, will uh, donate to the town the conservation property, you know, the the property that's valuable for conservation to be to be donated to the town." uh after you know uh, as part of the development process and that actually worked out beautifully because uh, no one had to exercise 61a the town didn't have to come up with the money in any way shape or form and and then sell back the lots and so the uh uh, the developer is deeding that you know the interest the conservation valued property to the town and the beauty of it to him is it's simpler it it goes and it, it goes it's faster by about a year in elapsed time to do that 
And so uh, a couple of people, Rob Aberg included, and some of the people in the town that worked on the first project said, well, I wonder if the purchaser for the Upton Street property is the same guy. Crush the head. Uh -huh. and, and so uh, Rob and I met with the town manager and the town manager wondered the same thing. And he says, well, I'll go find out. And it turns out the developer is the same guy. And he had a very, and everybody had a good experience uh, doing that cashless thing with the uh, Pleasant Street property. And everybody agreed right away to do the same cashless thing with the Upton Street property. And so that's a win, win, win for everybody. And so, yeah, they didn't do what we suggested, but they had a better idea. So you, know, you can't complain about that. And so the, a memorandum of understanding uh, has been signed between the select board and that developer. And as the project goes forward, the uh, interesting, you know, the, the valuable conservation land will be donated to the town or somebody, you know, or some conservation group. And so that's that's win win. And so it's faster. It doesn't require, you know, the town floating a short term bond to pay for it and going through the sales process. All that stuff is all you know disappears and it you know the the town gets the property for you know yeah but no, do we have no, that in no. writing ken yeah they got yes I, I believe the town the select board has signed the memo of memo of understanding with the uh developer to do the same thing that they just completed on pleasant street okay win 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 and so, is this property between upton street and old upton is right that that little it, it is, it's between upton street proceeding south to the railroad tracks right okay john can we the, do you think can we keep this track. uh i'm sorry can we keep this uh, uh agenda item on the agenda next time just to just to check in so uh we're forced to see if anything has changed good point um join you want to add 117 upton street to the agenda for next month please upton or robinson right it'd be oh, a good sorry, idea to keep our eye on it yeah. right yeah upton or robinson or both no, both uh both. well both the both. robinson robinson now, now so now the decks are cleared and the robinson deal is uh you know stands on its own without having the upton street thing you know confusing people okay but i'd like to keep an eye on both if it's possible sure yeah good idea thank you Thank you both. You're welcome. Okay, so that was number five. Number six, project updates. Um, Paul, do you wanna do the archives? So if you're muted. I haven't heard any more since the last meeting. Okay, and then I'll just add that Candy has proposed which is not this project but relates to all the projects digitizing or starting to digitize the records in the town clerk's office and so she sent an email to paul and to me and i guess joanne and we responded that sounds great just submit the application in january and we can move forward with that at um, may town meeting but that will be the, the current project is conserving, preserving the actual documents from 1700, 1800. The new project will be digitizing the old records so that they don't have to be handled. So you're, it's, a, it's kind of a two tiered uh, approach to preserve the documents. Not only that they don't have to be handled, but they can also then be accessed remotely. Oh, right. They don't go online, so it's easy for anybody to see any of it at any time. Yeah. So um, so that's good. Uh, should have pushed this one up first, Rich. You, you should be the star of the show. Well, go ahead. As you know, this has been on the agenda for I Ever. don't know how many years. For a Ever. few weeks. Forever. A few weeks. Well, maybe decades. <laughs> first of all, I want to show everybody the stone. If you can see this on, pass that down. And I've been in, in contact, and this is the temporary TP to keep the weather off of it that I've made. And Paul saw me there today. <laughs> and this is how it looks right now. 
it's sealed, but it has airflow going through it. For the reason is, the gentleman I talked to in Boston at the monument, one of the monument companies, said that you need airflow even though you're sealing it up for the winter. So I listened to him, and he told me what to do, kind of, and <laughs> I took it on myself by these pitches um, to do that until the spring. But he recommended to find out, one, how deep is it? The stone. Does it go down three feet, two feet, four feet? He says back in the old days when they put the stones in, they just took a slab on some of them and it could be down four feet, five feet. And turn around and you have to find that out. So I talked to Daryl today and... Daryl says, yeah, we could probably do that, but not until spring. I said, "That's I wouldn't touch it until spring. And then we can have, between now and then, where I have all these pictures in my, my phone, I can go down to Boston and talk to this gentleman and have him come out or another company come out and see if we can um, replicate the stone by what the stone is. He said that we might not be able to get the same type of material. And I said to him, well, then what do we do? He says we could try to do something close to it, but it's not going to be the exact thing. Um, by taking and getting the snow and the ice off it for the winter, where it's already got some cracks in it, he says you're, you're preserving it that way um, to have it, not crack anymore and getting any worse but he turned around and also said in the spring we probably could duplicate what's on there with a newer style black um, stone but it's not going to be the slate that it is or that type of slate so I don't know how you guys feel about it um, I just did had this done um, as Paul can contest, I was out there all this afternoon doing it, uh, me and one of my helpers, and uh, besides building it in my house and doing it his way. So I'm basically, step one is done. It's, it's being covered for the winter, and this way here, the, we, the stone does not get ruined anymore. Step two is now me, me hustling around and trying for somebody that can replicate it. If we can find out exactly by the pitches um, what type of stone it is and see if we can still get it. Um, I don't know what a budget, uh, if I have a budget for this. You do. Um, we do. Okay. I, I, I think I have it here. Just talking. It's ten or $15,000. It, it's not a lot. That's to have the work done, right? If mm -hmm. they to, to, if they come out and tell him, "Oh, yeah, we'll come out," but you have to give us money up front. No, I. I Does he would, tell them to pound sand? Seventy five hundred. Seventy five hundred. We have. Yeah. Okay. So what I would do is before I had somebody come out, I would make sure that they are capable of doing this stone. Um, and get all my ducks in the row and say, okay, we might have, you know, use the little uh, thing of we might have some more in the future. You want our business, come out and take a look at it. Good. and That's good. And see what we could do. And, uh, you know, and he might, rep you know, send me to somebody else or, you know, I'm going to try four or five different companies. And I got them all through Boston and in the metro west area so it's that's the best i can say right at this moment but i wanted to show you what the stone was today <clears throat> how i sealed it and the wood is anchored into the ground okay on each side of the tp i call it the tp okay i put stakes in the ground about two feet that way there it wasn't going to get blown over by wind or a heavy snowstorm. 
So this way, and if you look at the pitches, the stone is right in the middle, directly in the middle of the teepee, so it doesn't get hurt. Yeah. Good deal. Rich, I will, I th I'm real pleased that you've been able to do this and do it so quickly. Yeah. Um, that I believe the Historical Commission at one time belonged to the New England Gravestone Society, and that is a, a loose name it could be close to that i will try to get detailed information on that to see if they have any resources so you're not just in the dark on they would give us recommendations on people who might be able to help us yeah i got i, I got recommendations of boston monument uh -huh. um from whom from boston college right. <laughs> and I they they said and daryl gave me a couple names I haven't got in touch with those guys yet, but um, the one that does it for you know for Boston College and that they they're the ones who told me how to make this teepee uh, and to make sure there was airflow for the mosques and the mildew does not yeah. grow on it. <laughs> my concern, as much. my concern would be uh, whether or not it, the historical committee. Uh, has any veto authority over uh, what we had planned to do. Do you know about that, John? I don't think the Historical Commission has any veto authority. I think we do have to get permission from, I know, the, new from the selectmen. Yeah. We have to get possibly permission from the NIPMUCs and possibly permission from Mass Historical Commission. So there's going to be a lot of red tape. So This is it, not going to be an overnight a, job right it's it's it might take a, a lot of time for all the process to take place <clears throat> but i think um mass historical has their own concerns that um you know what's going to happen to the original and is it going to be in a place that's climate controlled or is you know because it, it could if you put it inside even though it's inside if it's not climate controlled that could create its own set of issues that could cause the slate to fall or to pop right. off. decay. So, you know, there's a lot of things that, and I will try to follow up with this Gravestone Society because they may have some good input. They may say what you have done is probably the best solution is to keep it because it's been in that ground for two or three, 200 years. Yeah. And it's hanging in there um, to document it, to photograph it, um, to do those kind of things. But they may also say, yeah, if you can do it X, Y, and Z way, then it would be safe to bring it inside. But well, one one other thing that I was thinking of, John, and this I wanted to pass through everybody, is see how I made this, the, the teepee. Why couldn't we make, if we have to keep it in the ground, all right, why can't we make it out of Lexan, okay? which is, is like plexiglass, but it's Lexan. Mm -hmm. And what we do at the bottom of it, like right down in here, we put vents. Okay? And that way we don't have to move the stone, and it costs us maybe five, $600 for Lexan and the glue to have it made. Or we could have all phase glass make it out of Lexan, mm -hmm. and we just put it there, on a um its own little foundation around it and nobody can everybody can view it the way it is <clears throat> we have it cleaned once we do it we clean it once more to get off the mold and mildew put it in lexan and we don't have to bother with nobody except maybe a thousand bucks yeah. well i think it's in the right hands so Let's, so, uh, let's see how uh, what John finds out and see what else. But uh, it was good that you were able to protect it for now. So, Well, yeah, that's good what deal. I was good asked deal. for. And yeah. Good man. Okay. Great. Thank you. No problem. That's what I'm here for. Whose gravestone is it? Is it a, a, a Nipmux gravestone? No. Deacon Abner. It's, Ab it's Deacon Abner Stowe. And it was carved yeah. by James New, who is a very well-known um, colonial stone carver, very famous. And there's several new carvings in our cemetery. So 
Why and because it's approval from the NIPMA Center. No, we don't. We don't. Well, the the reason for that, and this dates back to the, when this project first started, was it's thought to be, but it's not accurate that there are nip monks buried in that cemetery. And so if there are, then that triggers section 106 type reviews because of that. But because there aren't any, Mass Historical may say that's proven to be, that's his, the anecdotal information is false, that there are no nip monks buried there. You only need our permission, or maybe we don't need their permission. But I would say, I think we do need their permission because it seems like that's what um, I, Roger Holman had done some of this research umpteen years ago, and it seems like he did have to go to Mass Historical. You know that it, it's not just us, uh, the because who owns the it's the family is no longer around, so right. we can't just go willy nilly changing people's headstones. And because it's historic, that's how I guess Mass Historical has. There must be a law that allows them to have jurisdiction of these ancient markers right in the so. in the cemetery has been named three different type three different names Gra grafton burial grounds indian cemetery and oak oak place or oak street burial grounds that's what i found out so far well, I'm sure the Historical Society will let us know who we have to get clearance from. But especially if you're saying that it used to be. Those are the three names that. I, I'm sorry, I was talking when you were talking. Uh, could you just say that again? Paul? I had thought the Indian burial ground is further down. Um, it's at 122. Right, on Providence Road. And that's there's no Indians buried there either. That's. <laughs> right. But There's since, I, since I was a kid, we called that the Indian burial ground, yeah, the Indian yeah. cemetery. So I mean, when I first came to Grafton, the little booklet that Rita Martin had put together, it's called the Old and and Indian Burying Ground, right? And then it became known as the Oak Street Burying Ground. Yep. Um. So interesting, but. And there is, uh, I think, one lot that is still waiting for a, a lady in Worcester to be buried in there. Mm -hmm. So she owns she owns like seven lots in there. <clears throat> and I they're know. insisting on uh, the fact that she dies before they bury her. So like she was very <laughs> particular about that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Gotta have rules, Jim. All right. Have rules. Can we go on to the Grafton Common? Yes. Let's go to see the what, common. See what I did there? Can we go on the common? Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Paul. All right. So um, just since we last met, um, we did meet with the select board, and they approved our two change orders, one for the bandstand, the other one for the backflow preventer. Um, that has been signed by the contractor. So, um, you know, we're ready to move forward with those. Um in addition, um, during that meeting, I brought up the subject of the two uh, motor vehicle accidents that had taken place um, during this past year. One was um, in the spring, and it involved, um, from what I'm told, a, a, a DUI. And um, that took out two sections of fence for um, granite posts and, um, and a cherry tree. Uh, and then the other one you guys will remember was right after we put up the the lantern. Um, we had they were up for less than six hours, and somebody smashed into those and, and took out one of our uh, archways, the one that's on the east side of the common. Um, the archway itself um, is perhaps salvageable. The lantern, it's questionable whether it is or not. Um, we're still waiting for an estimate, uh, well, first a, a clarification of whether it can be um, actually restored. If not, we already do have um, an idea on the price because you know, we ordered those less than a year ago. Um, there may be a slight increase, but it's around $1,500 for those, those lanterns. Um, and you know, there's additional work that will be required to um, redo the brick where oil and some scraping took place. 
Uh, in addition to that, the two granite posts that the archway was set in um, will need to be replaced and the electrical connection redone. Um, a trash barrel was um, destroyed in that. So we have estimates for all that. Um, I still, I've shared part of it with, with Evan, but I still have to review part of it. We just got further clarification today. Um, but we're moving forward with that. And I did get um, at the select board meeting, the um, statement from Evan that we should not have to take out of this current project's funding, the expense to repair all of those. Some of it will be covered by insurance, the second motor vehicle accident. It'll cover things, um, it won't cover fence. Uh, it won't cover any shrubbery or anything like that, but it will cover the archway and the lantern and the trash barrel. And um, I, don't, I don't know that it will cover uh, the brick. Um, so at any rate, Evan was gonna come up with an alternative um, resource for, for the funding needed to do that. And the other one with the two sections of fence and the four posts and the cherry tree, none of that was covered. And uh, he also committed to finding a funding source for those. So we're moving forward with getting that done. It won't come out of the existing project um, coffers. Um, there is some you know, obviously with the bandstand being done, um, there's work that's gonna be done there in the spring. So we're hopeful that the work needed to do the repairs from both of those will get done in the same time so that by sometime in the spring, we will have all of that work done and the common will be able to open up and, and be fully enjoyed by everyone in its new, uh, its new state. <laughs> so, um, also, I, I, last time I was here, I think it was you, Ken, you brought up um, the tree survey. You had asked if we had one. And we had been looking for um, a document that we had heard had been done quite a while ago, and we hadn't been able to find. Well, lo and behold, we have unearthed the Grafton Common Landscape Preservation and Maintenance Plan from 2000. So we now have that. And so, Ken, if you are interested, I can definitely share that with you um along with the other one that we've had done more recently which wasn't really a focused on um maintenance and whatnot but it's more an inventory of the trees and their current condition and what we have so uh, I'll, I'll forward those to you ken i know you're okay interested. thanks paul I, i'd like to uh just go on the record saying that i i took a walk through the common uh one evening recently and i just think that it's you know the work to being done there is really beautiful it's not very nice Thank you. I agree. And I noticed the lights weren't turned on. Uh, it was <laughs> still not turned on. Is that because of the electrical uh, uh, damage yeah. to the <laughs> to the? Well, wire? that is part of it. That is part of it. Um, but there's a the telephone pole is still there in the common that needs to be removed. And then once that's done, they can do the actual electrical hookup. How uh, the the damaged piece is going to play into that is unknown at this point. Um, I'm hoping that they can work around that and at least have the rest of it um, going and before <laughs> before the snow flies. Uh, so, I'm still hopeful. We're so waiting for National Grid. We paid for it. Um, we've been following up, and they have not been responsive. Uh, so the work be, the work done so far is just looks very good. Looks very nice. It's a it's a real asset for the town. I agree. Thank you. Boy, that's high oh, praise, Paul, hard. you know, because Ken is really strict. He is. He's tough. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree. It, it, it's definitely looking beautiful there. So it'll be even nicer when we get the dance band all done and we have our mm. archway uh, repaired. And back May I ask what you've done, Paul? Oh, Paul. It, it takes a village. Hey, Paul. Yes. Um. With the insurance company, they're, they're not liable to pay for the granite stone that they ruined or or any of the cleanup from DEP or, you know, for the antifreeze and the oil that leaked down into the ground and we're not going to get paid for that? Am I hearing that right? My understanding is we get paid for some things. Um, things like fences and shrubbery. Um, don't get covered by the insurance, according to our town administrator. And he had reached what? out to the insurance adjuster. Um, 
I, I personally want to get clarity around that too. So I want to call my own insurance agent. And yeah, because find it, out it, more it's, about it. But. It seems if you do property damage to somebody's property, like I went over to Brooks' house and I parked on his tree by mistake, you know. It's, <laughs> you know, I mean, he's going to... Better than he parked on Brook by mistake. Right. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just saying, I go over to Brooks' house and I hit the, tr you know, the tree and knock it down. I mean, I'm liable for it. And uh, if they're not going to pay, can we, do we sue them? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You all looking into that though, right, Paul? Yeah, I'm going to personally look into... Thank you. Uh, my I, agent, but that is the word that was brought up by the town administrator at that select board meeting saying what they talk to their insurance adjuster and it doesn't cover that but it will cover he said i believe he said it wouldn't cover the brick but it would cover the archway it would That's, cover the lantern no offense it just sounds funny you know it, uh, i agree with you it does seem odd because you gotta you gotta you know have property damage and that's part of property that's why i'm saying i i just don't get that hmm. Maybe I'm too slow to, you know, no, think about it. No, I had the same reaction. Which it's, I, it but I know it's in good hands with you, so. That's it. All right. I thought weights and measures was already done, John. No? It's not the um, where it's going to go because the location is not where it was originally planned. They did not put in electrical wiring and bet that's because of the other issues with the library. Um, I don't know if we're waiting for the dust to settle on all of that to then want CTA, which is, I believe, the, con the name of the contractor that's doing all this work, that we just then have a, a separate contractor come in and do the electrical because there's no electrical outlet where the um, way to measure cabinet is supposed to go. And so we were just going to wait rather than move it in, not have it finished, then they have to pull it out to install this electrical outlet. Um, so that's because the library isn't totally finished. That's kind of holding that up. Uh, all right. Are you ready Lions for the Lions Club. Club? Yep. This is how fast you can move through three action items. On the first one, on phase fun, uh, phase one of the <clears throat> of the Lions Club work, that was the uh, the the engineering and design work for their jobs there, and that uh, has been completed. And the town accountant is going to be no, uh, notified to close out on phase one. On phase two, uh, talking about uh, parking and so forth, is. Uh, what we're what I'm being told by Dennis Perrin is that uh, is that uh, based on the engineering design in keeping with current uh, water runoff regulations, the cost to add paved parking along the soccer field is prohibitive. So they're not going to be pursuing that part of the project. Uh, they found that parking can be tight, especially when people park at odd places in the lot. So to alleviate that issue, they're going to have uh, parking lot lined with designated spaces. And that should help to improve the tight parking situations. Uh, phase three was the one that dealt with the, uh, the outdoor uh, septic system. And there is uh, a little modification. The Board of Health agent has uh, advised that she wants the existing connection uh, to the clubhouse bathroom to be tied into the proposed uh, public bathroom septic. So um, there was some discussion uh, about that initially, but in order to move forward, uh, we just gave it the go ahead. So that's all going to be funneled out into the same little cesspool. And that's all uh, for one, two, and three. Great. Right. Right. Jim. Yes. Regarding the parking area for the Lions Club, one thing that I learned within the last year or two about because of being on the planning board, some developers have come to us with what's called grass pavers. So it's basically like a honeycomb kind of thing that they put down on grass. It allows the rainwater and stuff to still seep right in right there. And it, but it allows a more stable surface for parking or driving. So that's something that they might want to look into. I think uh, what I will do is pass that information along, and if uh, Dennis has any questions, you demand. 
Okay. Didn't, Thank you for your input. Did copy me on that email? I'm sorry? Did Dennis copy me on that email? Uh, I, I've got a bunch of them. Okay. If I don't have it, I'll ask you. All right. Because then I can update the spreadsheet. Thanks. All right. So can you, before we move so on, can I just ask you, what was the name of that again? Grass Pavers. Sandy has a question, too. All right. Hang on. Grass? Yes. Grass, G-R-A-S-S, -S, Pavers. P-A-V-E-R-S. Yep. Pavers, okay, is, grass. Oh, well, with the mask time. on, I'm sorry. That's okay. Grass okay. pavers, okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, so this is Sandy. Just to let you know, it's the, the, the vendor name is uh, Grass Pave. There's like five or six different systems out there. You just want to be very careful which system you um, get because depending upon the amount of uh, use of it, uh, you may get an area that just looks like gravel. Or in other areas that you know that will have great grasp, so you want to be a little bit careful. But whoever did your uh, engineering should have a, a, a whole variety of different, you know, porous Vendors. systems or reinforced turf. There's a bunch of things out there that you can do. All right. Well, I'll pass that along. Thank you, though, for that. Thank you. Um... It's time Justin, for pa Poncho's buddy. Um, Justin, do you have an update for Cisco? I do. Ray sent me an email yesterday that she's touched base with the architect who met with a structural engineer two weeks ago at the homestead. They, they did a thorough inspection of the building. The architect, Tom Chalmers, I'll forward you the email. Thanks. So you have it. <laughs> Tom Chalmers <laughs> is waiting for the report from the engineer and will then discuss those findings and how that impacts the drawings and such for the interior restoration. She anticipates that the drawings will be completed in spring. They're targeting March 1st. And she did have a question about the CPC funds expiration. She's just wanted to double check that she's off by a year. She, she has an extra year that she thinks I'll, I, get, I have to email her back to tell her that. <laughs> and she also has additional information shared that the Tribal volunteers had a work day at the homestead this fall focused on exterior painting and CWF application. They are working to maintain the exterior as best they can while pushing forward with the goal of interior restoration. And that's the update. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Um, so I, I any... followed up with Jen Anderson on the recreation ADA projects and they're actually not complete yet. She said there's a punch list of items that they're meeting with the contractor to go over. So that okay. will, will remain open. And then weed abatement, I did get a very long update um, from um, Bill Nelson. Um, the short of it is the commission's currently drawing up bids to commence the first and second phase of the four phase project. Um, they, he outlines what the phases are. Um, the bids are scheduled to go out early January of 2022, which really is no different than the last update. Okay. And did Jen have any update for 95 North Street? You know what? I didn't ask about that. And I think Kristen is the point person on that. Okay. And she didn't. Um, Sandy, have you, you haven't, they haven't reached out to you about the RFP, have they? You're muted. Oh, you're muted. Sandy, you're muted. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I think I have too many things going on, but no, they haven't. Okay. They had reached out to me about something else, but no, no they have not. Or if okay. they did, I didn't see it. Okay, I'll send an email to Kristen to get an update. All right. Update. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. Um, you were shut out. You were shut <laughs> out. I have a motion and a second. It's been moved and seconded um, to adjourn. And let me flip back to my cheat sheet. Rich. Yes. Justin. Yes. Jim. Gallagher.
Oh. All muted. Hi. Um, Sandy. Yes. I skipped Brooke, I think. You did, yes. John, I, Ken. Aye. All the um, unanimous vote to adjourn. So we are adjourned at 7.03. One hour on the dot.